Hello and welcome. In the previous session, we saw that the purpose of artificial intelligence is to help a human being make the best educated decision possible. Let's try to understand now how we can help a human being make the best educated decision. How does it work? Well, to make the best educated decision, you must have the knowledge. What is knowledge? It's the knowledge of the possible future. The future we will never know. But what we are looking for is an idea of what might happen. What we are looking for, for lack of impossible certainty, is a probability. This question about the future has existed for all time. In an attempt to overcome this uncertainty of the future, which makes decision-making so difficult, people have resorted to all kinds of attempts to consult psychics, to read the stars, a crystal ball, or tarot cards. We have always tried to find out what was going to happen, at least to have an indication. And we did this until the 17th century. In the 17th century, more precisely in 1654, in France, Antoine Gombeau, knight of Mere, a gambling enthusiast, asked one of his friends, Blaise Pascal, to help him solve the problem of the distribution of earnings when a game is interrupted before its conclusion. Pascal, with the help of Pierre de Fermat, another famous mathematician, begins to work on the quantification of chances and invents modern probabilities as we know it today. That is a method of quantifying the probability of an event occurring in the future. This was done with simple mathematical tools at the beginning, but became considerably more complex over time. So, if we take a leap in time from the invention of probabilities by Blaise Pascal to the AI of today, this is only an evolution of the quantification of the probability of occurrence of an event in the future, which allows us to be more comfortable in making a decision because we will then possess the knowledge. What exactly is this knowledge? It is actually an evolution of information, which itself is an evolution of data. So we can go from data to information and from information to knowledge. Let's take an example. Let's assume that we have to make the decision to buy a TV. Our optimization function is the best value for money. Suppose we have data in an Excel spreadsheet that is the number 1000, 1000. It is data. It doesn't represent anything at the moment and therefore does not allow us to make a decision. Suppose we know now that 1000 is expressed in Canadian dollars and represents the price of a television. All of a sudden, we have information. The data is put into context. We have a unit, the Canadian dollar, and we have an attribute, which is the price of a television. Does that allow us to make a decision? Unfortunately, still not. Our goal being an optimization of the value for money, we still lack something. We lack perspective with the population. We are missing the comparison. We are missing the knowledge. If, however, Someone tells us that those $1,000 are in the first quartile of the distribution of all the equivalent TV prices, then we will know that there are at least 75% of the TVs that are more expensive. We can then make a decision, knowing that we are probably getting a good deal. This knowledge will allow us to make an educated decision. In short, data, no decision possible. Information, still no decision possible. It's only knowledge that allows us to make an educated decision. 
Then we went further. If we master the decision influencers, the variables that make it up and interact with each other, then we have an understanding of the decision. This understanding will allow us to reproduce our decision-making process and even to make simulations. If now this decision-making process is repeated so often that it becomes entrenched and automatic, that is, we do not think about it anymore, and then understanding has turned into wisdom. Here is a summary of the evolution of data in the context of the search for knowledge, which alone allows for an educated decision-making. This knowledge is often expressed in the form of probability, therefore the probability for an event to occur in the future. And that is what we need to make a decision. This evolution of data into knowledge, supported by computer technology, has led to several processes and tools in what has become the data analytics industry. We have a product evolution that starts with descriptive analysis. Descriptive analysis is, as the name suggests, the statistical description of what we have. This will include central measures such as average or median, or measures of dispersion such as standard deviation or variance. But it also includes percentages, shares of distributions, often represented graphically. In short, the descriptive statistics of what we have in front of us today, a description of the present. The next step is diagnostic analysis. We compare what we have today with what we had yesterday and try to find explanations. Why do we have what we have today? Are there any elements in the past that would have a relationship with what we can see today and could allow us to explain it in some extent. This is the field of business intelligence or BI. BI gives us information about what we had yesterday, what we have today, and the possible interactions between the two. The next step is predictive analysis. It represents a considerable leap in complexity as it addresses the uncertainty of the future. It offers, using complex mathematical tools, to transform the information obtained so far into knowledge. That is, as we have seen, the probability of occurrence of an event in the future. And only then can we begin to make educated decisions. Before that, the only information in the absence of knowledge leaves the decision maker obliged to find possible explanations and correlations on his own to assess unquantified probabilities and thus to continue to decide in complete uncertainty. So descriptive analysis, no decision support. Diagnostic analysis, no real decision support. It is only predictive analysis that allows us to lift a corner of the uncertainty of the future and thus to make an educated decision. This is the field of predictive modeling, machine learning, and deep learning. The next step is prescriptive analysis. It is almost the same as predictive analysis, but vice versa. Predictive analysis tells us for a given present universe what is the probability of an event occurring in the future? Prescriptive analysis tells us what we need to change in our present universe in order to increase the probability of a given event in the future. The last step in all this evolution is autonomous systems. Once we have acquired the data and understood its interactions, modeled its behavior, and got the knowledge as probability, we still have to decide and execute our decision. If the rules governing our decision based on probabilities are known, they can be automated, and we create an autonomous system. 
then from the acquisition of data to the execution of the decision, we remove the human from the process and we create a real artificial intelligence. What we need to remember is that what we need to make educated decisions is knowledge. This knowledge is the probability for an event to occur in the future. This knowledge is given to us through the use of mathematical tools for calculating probabilities, meaning predictive modeling. Modeling that will be the subject of our next and third lesson. See you soon.